So if you watched my recent review of AMD's new Threadripper 3970X, you'll know that it's pretty much uncontested in terms of raw multi-threading performance. Not only do you get 32 cores and 64 threads in a pretty efficient package, but the IPC and clock speed gains of the Zen 2 architecture make this thing an absolute beast. All of that testing though was at stock clock speeds, and today we're going to see how much more performance is left in the tank with overclocking and additional cooling, and sort of what you can expect in terms of of frequencies and voltages. So in the launch day review for all of the testing there, we used the same cooler as all of the other CPUs on the test bench, and that's a 280 mil liquid cooler in the form of the Kraken X62 from NZXT. Thermals there were actually really solid, but if you're spending this much money on a CPU for your workstation, you probably also have some enthusiast level cooling going on also. So for this testing today, we're going with a 360 mil radiator hooked up to a custom loop, and of course using a proper TR4 water block for the 3970X. Although the new third generation Threadripper CPUs use a new socket, all TR4 coolers are still compatible with TRX40 motherboards. The block that I'm using here is the Fantex Glacier C399A. The noteworthy feature here is the massive cold plate designed to cover the entire heat spreader on Threadripper CPUs. The motherboard that we're using here is the ASUS TRX40 Zenith 2 Extreme. This is definitely one of the more expensive and overkill TRX40 motherboards that are available. So so it should pretty much represent the best case performance or at least pretty close to it. We'll also be monitoring thermals for the VRM, which are actively cooled on this board. Overclocking the 32 core Threadripper CPU may give us an idea of how the 64 core variant will run at stock. And lastly, the fans that I've got mounted to the radiator are the Noctua Chromax NFF12 static pressure fans, and I'm running them at their max RPM, which is 1400 RPM. So in our previous testing at stock, the Threadripper 39 970X maintained an all-core boost clock of around 3.85 gigahertz, and with a 280 mil liquid cooler, it did this with a peak of around 77 degrees C, with a room ambient of around 21 C. Remember these numbers, roughly at least, because they add some perspective for the overclocking numbers that we'll see in just a minute. Now, by running the 3970X on our 360 mil custom loop setup, we don't actually get a huge decrease in thermals compared to our 280 mil AIO. The hottest core complex die, CCD for short, peaks at 71.3 degrees C, with the coolest CCD peaking at 63.3. Overall, certainly not terrible thermals for a 32 core 64 thread CPU, but I honestly was expecting a bit more of a reduction here. Now when it came to overclocking over much trial and error, we do end up bound by CPU thermals really early on, well before we can push the 3970X to anything super impressive. Remember, at stock, the 3970X runs at a voltage of around 1.1 volts, so even bumping things up to 1.2 volts can see a pretty significant increase in CPU thermals. In the end, I was able to run the 3970X in Blender, running at 4.15 GHz at 1.216 volts. Note that 1.21 volts is the effective vCore when the CPU is under load. What I set in Ryzen Master Software was slightly higher. So when running this overclock, the hottest CCD peaked at 90.8 degrees C, with the coolest one peaking at 79.8. Bottom line, if you're planning on overclocking the 3970X, 1.2 volts is pretty much going to be the upper limit with a 360 mil liquid cooler. Even then, you'll need to be running a high airflow case with a reasonable ambient room temperature of around 20 to 22 degrees C. The 3970X will shut off once it reaches 95 degrees C, and that's definitely not something you want to happen when you're putting it through some critical work. The motherboard VRM is more than capable of this amount of power though, and I think it will handle the 64 core 3990X when that arrives just fine, as here it just peaked at 70 degrees C. This was on an open test bench as well, and the only direct airflow was from the two small inbuilt 40mm fans mounted to the heatsink. Power consumption at the wall with the overclock was 116 watts higher compared to stock, so that's something that you want to consider also if you're doing a ton of sustained load. Now, I was able to squeeze in a few Cinebench runs at 4.25 GHz running at 1.27 volts, and there the power consumption for the entire system stretched to over 600 watts. 
Now that sounds like a lot, but for a 32 core, 64 thread CPU, that's actually not that bad. Again though, above 4.2 gigahertz for the 3970X isn't realistically going to be attainable under sustained loads, unless you live in an insanely cold climate. At the end of each Cinebench run here, which lasted about 15 seconds, it was peaking at over 90 degrees C. So thermals and power are one thing, but what do the performance gains here actually look like? Well, in Cinebench we see a 6.3% increase increase at 4.15 GHz and a 9.1% increase at 4.25. For the trade-off in increased thermals and power though, I'm not sure that's actually worth it. In the single threaded test, we do see a decrease as expected as we are capping the frequency of the 3970X, preventing it from boosting to around 4.5, which is its typical single core turbo. In V-Ray though, we do actually see a substantial increase, a little over 9% here. This shows us that it is heavily dependent on the application too. Blender is another example of this. We see a 13.7% reduction in render time here when compared to stock, freeing up almost half a minute. Premiere Pro didn't see massive gains, a 6.7% reduction in render time when exporting a 10 minute 4K video, saving us around 20 seconds. Proxy ingesting in Adobe Premiere saw just a 4.8% reduction in total time. We see a similar thing here with the R5 3600 where we're only saving around 20 seconds by overclock. Clocking. And not much to be seen in 7-Zip's compression and decompression benchmark, about a 3% improvement for compression and less than 1% for decompression. So in terms of overclocking the 32-core 3970X, you're not only going to see minimal gains in the absolute frequency sense because we are bound by thermals pretty early on, which is understandable of a workstation CPU of this caliber, but uh, it is also heavily dependent on what production workload you are running. Programs like Cinebench, V-Ray, and Blender gave us some pretty decent gains with our 300 megahertz overclock, so this might indicate decent scaling in 3D modeling and rendering programs. For those use cases, it might even be worth it to overclock to something more modest, like four gigahertz flat at 1.15 volts or slightly lower. Definitely do not expect too much though. You won't be able to reach 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz like you will with the 16 core 3950X. I think that's the main takeaway here, although we can reach some truly absurd absolute performance with third gen Threadripper when it's overclocked, these CPUs run more than fast enough for 90% of users when they're stock. So if you are interested in picking up the 3960X or 3970X, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.